part two and I'll just be talking more about classes and things within classes as basics that you need to know when you're learning Java so if I open my um, class up again from last time this is what we've done so far we've created a class we've created some a string called message we've created two uh, methods where we give message a value and then print it and then we've created another method where we specify what the value is up here and then it, we give that value to the value of message and then we print it and if I was to just delete this line here and compile it and then as I was showing in part one when I create this class and I run that specific thing as you can see because we haven't given message any sort of value the value of message is null so and that's because we're just telling it to print out this thing called message which is a string but we haven't actually given string a value and yes we have we can add a piece of code as I had earlier but what if you want to just create a class and that class automatically gives something all the values to what you want it to give it to so for example let's say you're making a game once again back to that example and you run the game you want to automatically give the player three lives already without having to run anything or click on anything or anything you just want them to have three lives so you can do this in Java and this is called an initializer so after every when you create the public class hello world whatever your class is called and you've done all your fields you can have loads of these after that and before any method you can have such a class where you say public and then you have to have the exact name of the class name hello world and then there's the parameter fields obviously you can um, add something in there if you need to but in this case we won't and then close it now if I compile this what this does is this is the line of code anything between this bracket to this bracket will be run when I first create this class whether I click on anything or not all these all the code which is in here will be automatically run so for example if I was to say message equals hello world 2 let's say and I compile this of obviously you need the semicolon and I compile this and then now if I run this and then I click on print message as you can see this is from before so if I just clear the terminal and do it again so it doesn't confuse you print message you see it is hello world 2 and we haven't actually had to do anything for for it to do this or we can even copy and paste this here and press compile and now when I create this class it's not even gonna I'm not even gonna need to call the method for it to do it and as you can see it's printed the message and this is what you call an initializer so why is this important well here is why it is important if you create let's say this is your player and you create a private string message private int lives private int coins etc now when we first run the game we want lives to equal three we want coins to equal zero and we'll compile this and now if I create this class and then I inspect it you will see the lives are now equal to 3 and the coins are equal to 0 and this is done automatically when this is created so things like this are important when it comes to Java the initializer field is very important another thing that you can do is any such any of these methods like this when you give them a specific name they can be called within another method so for example if I can give message a value here and then rather than having to create the class and then click on print message as I have been doing all this time where I right click over here and then click on the method I can just tell the class to call this method when it is created automatically and the way I do this is I write the name of the method and I open close and then I put a semicolon at the end now this tells the class that when I run the class it runs that method as you can see and this can be done within anything I can put this within
another method, if you see what I mean. But when when it comes to such thing, as you can see, this gave me an error. Why has it given me an error? It's because when we created this method, we've specified that there has to be some sort of string within its um, parameter field. And when we call it automatically on BlueJ, it asks us what that message is. But on other programs, when you're using Java, such a thing won't come up. As I said to you, BlueJ is just for teaching, just to show you how things work in Java, how the computer works. And um, so basically, the problem here is that we haven't given some sort of value to this message when we're calling it. So the way we can do this is we have to specify in here. This is called because I said so, for example. And if I compile this, as you can see, it has it has now worked because we've asked for a string here and we've given a string up here when we've called this method. Now, if I was to say, for example, I asked for a string and an int and we call this int m. Now, if I compile, it will give me the same error. Why? Because we've given a sh string, but we haven't given an, an int to it. So if I say comma 9, for example, and compile, you see, it's worked. But let's get rid of the int because we are in this right now and we compile it. Now what's going to happen is when I run this class, it's going to call this method or to call this initializer automatically. Within this initializer, it's going to call this method automatically. Within this method, a message is going to be equal to hello world. Then system's going to print out that message, which is equal to hello world. Then it's going to call this method with the string of this is called because I said so and this is going to and if we go to what this will do it will change the value of message which was which was hello world here to what we have specified here and it will print it again as this new value and don't forget as I said to you before in Java things are always in order so it will do this first this first this first which is why first the value of message is hello world and that is printed as hello world and then the value of message actually changes and by the time this code finishes the value of message is no longer hello world even though it was before and it has printed it so if I was to compile this and run it you should see how this works so as you can see this is where it starts this is from before so this message is hello world and then it's changed the message to what we have told it to and there you go. So if I was to just clear the terminal and then create this again just to be like show you how it is. There you go. And that's how that's worked like that. 